Hello and welcome to Pods Like Us. I'm Martin Quibell, known to my friends as Marv, and today I am joined by both James Hounsell and James Harrison from TTM Podcast. How are you guys? Really good, really good. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, very, very happy. Thank you. How are you, Marv? You okay? Not bad, thank you very much. How were you first introduced to podcast and the world of podcasting? Yeah, um, very, very easy question to that one. Um, We obviously have regular jobs that we usually do throughout the week. Um, My journey to work sometimes can consist of an hour journey there and an hour journey back. Now, I know Joe Rogan has a really good podcast internationally in, in the United States of America covering a whole range of subjects, which I find interesting from Professor Brian Cox to you know, a whole host of other things, people from the sporting world. And do you know what? His podcasts um, usually last the whole journey to work. And then I can really look forward to it during the day and uh, then listen to it on the way home. And that was my first uh, real introduction into the podcasting world. Myself, I'm actually a really big wrestling fan and uh, not masses amount of mainstream coverage on it, more now than there used to be. So I actually listen to a lot of podcasts on wrestling. Um which is where most of my podcast listening is done. I find podcasts are really good for um, sort of niche topics, really, that you don't normally get on, you know, mainstream media. And, you know, the fact that anyone like like ourselves, like yourself, can produce them from, you know, their own home, it, it, it just gives more variety, doesn't it? And also during the, the pandemic, I was working at home a lot, which I think a lot of people have probably found while well, working at home. Obviously, you're not going to sit and watch stuff watch the telly and that but pop a podcast on helps you get through the day doesn't it well eventually the amount of time people have been stuck at home you've probably run out of stuff to watch on netflix it, absolutely well. absolutely you know what, Marv? Um, i'll be honest with you running a supermarket um i i've had to work through the whole thing um so i have i haven't i haven't been at home i haven't had the luxury uh, of spending time at home and i think um you know a personal thing that i think the government should have made people that were staying at home come out and do a bit of work on the front lines to to, to chip in to help the nation's cause and that's a personal feeling of mine really i had to work through it as well people still need alarms to respond to that's correct absolutely, that's my job. absolutely. alarm response so have you had any history before either of you with doing podcast or is this your first time first, first time, time. Yeah, yeah time. no, right. no, no history whatsoever. No media training in any background whatsoever. Wow, you do really well then for the interviews. They really, really flow well. Uh, what is TTM podcast then? What does it stand for, and what is it all about? Yeah, um, it stands. Well, do you know what? It's a funny story about this. Um, the, the podcast actually started. It wasn't myself and James. It was myself and two other friends that started it. We're sat in um, the front room and, you know, we, to escape life sometimes, you need an outlet and something to focus on. And we thought, do you know what? Let's start a podcast. Let's do it. Let's just, let's have it. Let's get, let's, you know, let's branch out and start a podcast. Um, okay. We're thinking of names. And as there was three of us, we thought the three musketeers, which then the name TTM was born. However, the, the two other gentlemen that, that, that were involved couldn't commit to the podcast in a way that I wanted to commit to it because I found something I loved. I found something quite comfortable, um, enjoying the research. So what we did is um, we invited James, who's here now, obviously, the, my partner in this. Um, we invited him onto a podcast uh, about 9-11. And do you know what? The recording went terribly. Um, it was all yeah, yeah. <laughs> The microphones wouldn't work. It was an absolute disaster. And at that point, um, me and James then decided to go on our own, um, have, you know, invested in the proper equipment that we needed to, to go with. And as it's now started to grow through massive social media platforms such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Reddit, YouTube, you name it, we're there. We've now changed it to incorporate. It's now Think Twice Media's. Um, because it's not just podcasting that we're branching into. It's actually making short documented films uh, and really um, more visual stuff as well, because it's something that we're interested in. We're doing a lot of work with uh, the FA of the British Virgin Islands at the moment um, in terms of football um, as part of our global football series. So any any sports fans out there that, that do love sports interviews, um, you know, it is chalk and cheese. You either love it or you hate it, you know, same as Marmite. But if you do love it, it's a, it's a wonderful series to listen to and get involved with. Yeah, so for myself, um, in terms of getting involved, obviously I've known James for probably 15 years. Um, and when he told me he was starting to do a podcast, I was incredibly interested. 
Um, much like James looking for a bit of an outlet. And I, as soon as he told me he was doing a podcast, I was desperate. How can I get involved? How can I, can I be a guest? You know, I've never done anything like this before. Can I be a guest at least? Um, can I, can I get to know sort of how it works, what they're doing? And like you said, we, we went to do this 9-11 podcast. I did a, like a massive amount of research, you know, real detailed stuff. And I turned up and I think they were sort of a little bit embarrassed because I was very well prepared because I didn't want to let him down. And then, it, uh, like you said, it went horribly wrong and it was never actually released, was it, James? The, no, the we didn't release it. Well, we, no. we, we, then, we then subsequently did one uh, again independently with me and James, which is available. So then after that, I, I sort of, he kind of, you know, said, can you give me a hand a little bit? And then we float some ideas around. And, and once, once I got a foot in the door, really, I was, um, I was fully committed. And like he says, we've gone from strength to strength. Yeah, I uh, actually listened to one of your, well, I've listened to a couple of your episodes recently, and uh, I've, I've already said to yourselves before we started recording the show, I'm not much of a sport or no. person, but I think, was it somebody that's uh, coaching in the Cayman Islands or somewhere? That's right, Ben yeah. Pugh, yeah, English ben guy. Pugh. Yeah, he's the and international football that, manager, yeah. I actually found that really interesting, so well done on getting somebody who's not actually into football actually yeah. giving them a something that was interesting on a subject that I wouldn't normally go well, into. Well, do you know what, Marv? Um, a, a lot of people say that about football. It's not like lacrosse. It's it's not like croquet. It's boring. It's difficult to get into. But with football, it's the fastest growing sport on the planet. And uh, it is the universal game of the human race, as, as far as we're concerned. And then the fact that you took the time to listen to it. Thank you. We're very pleased with that. Yep, so that's basically me saying that you've done a really good job there. Thank you. By, you know, I've enjoyed both the episodes I've listened to. I've listened to one of the conspiracies and that one, and I'm going to keep keep listening, I'll be honest. Thank what you. conspiracy did you listen to, Mark? Oh. 9-11, or was it the Travis Walton UFO abduction? Or, it was uh, the UFO, dis- di- yeah, it was, was the it- UFO one. Was it? Uh, there's there's two UFO ones. There's one where we had uh, a Mr. Steve Fielding who alleges he was personally abducted by UFOs, and another one that we did with Kelsey uh, from the United States of America, a YouTuber, uh, where we discussed the Travis Walton uh, world famous UFO abduction case. It was the one who said that he was abducted. Yeah, right. So I, I wasn't yeah. actually in that one, Marv. No. Um, that was prior to my time with TTL. Yeah, that that was the first ever one. That we was did. the first episode. Yeah, mm. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. We've come so, a bit of a way now from there, my friend. But I, it was a good I, one. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone. I've gone really strange. I went from the first, and then I did the last. So yeah, you. fair enough. <laughs> to be fair, that's actually not a bad way to go, uh, Marv. To be fair, because it's a good way of seeing progress. Uh, yeah, it's a real drastic state, you know. That, that's why I did it. Was because then yeah. it gave me a good idea of where you've come from yeah. at the beginning and where you've got to at the end, or, yeah, or yeah. at the end, but recently. So. Um, how do you go about selecting and getting the guest that you get? So it's sort of, I would say it's a, it's a two-pronged attack in many ways. So we've probably, although we've got a lot of similar interests, we've also got different interests as well. So where we're doing it with, we, we do a lot of sport because that's our main primary interest. We've also separately got, got an interest in conspiracies and that sort of thing. So we're very open to whatever, but where we've kind of split ourselves into two sections so we've got ttm sports and ttm conspiracies yeah the conspiracy stuff uh in terms of selecting we didn't actually have any guests over the 9-11 for example there wasn't a guest it was just me and james um with the travis walton story james happened to link up with with a lady as he mentioned called kelsey who has her own youtube channel in america or, or worldwide and he connected with her on Facebook and decided that we would do some sort of collaboration. And then the, the, that, so that's how we met her with the football ones and the sport ones. It's a lot more difficult. So obviously you are approaching people who are potentially celebrities or low level celebrities, but, but busy people, do you know what I mean? People who aren't necessarily doing. So you're really relying on people's goodwill. So we pretty much, we just approached a private message on Twitter, follow them on Twitter, private message. We were given some really good advice by a lady called Paige, who has a Reverie True Crime podcast in, uh, she's based in Mississippi. She gave us some really good advice of literally just shoot your shot. 
You just got to shoot your shot. If you don't ask these people, they're never, you're never going to get told no, are you? You know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Marv. Now, Marv, in terms of James of what you're saying, yeah, it's correct. It, it is a two prong attack. It isn't all obviously, you know, just through Twitter and that as well. well as, what we've got to remember is here is as we've started doing the podcast, our guests are now starting to climb higher in status, um, in social status, for instance, in terms of our boxers. If I was to tell you just 48 hours ago, we were at one of the most famous boxing gyms in the world, watching a future heavyweight champion spa. Um, that's a bit of a far cry from sat down with Steve Fielding in a kitchen talking about his alien alleged abduction, you know? Um, yeah. So so what, what these other people are seeing is as we're releasing it on social media, you will get people that are verified start and to follow you you're getting people with big big client uh fan bases that will now start to follow you because uh, we did an interview with gary spike o'sullivan uh who's an irishman but big in america with the with the irish america new york uh you know sort of tie-in really um he then um, retweeted the interview that we did with him and then off the cusp of that you get more people that see it off the cusp of that we had world famous gyms in ireland following us and then people in the boxing fraternity for instance when we approach people now we could say well look we've got a track record we spoke to gary spike o'sullivan uh, we've done ashley thea Payne, who's had very strong links to new york and las vegas um, we, we've we've been to the world famous peacock gym um so yeah as far as i'm concerned it's it's attracting these people on social media but let's be brutally honest we're not going to get on the phone to cindy crawford we're not going to get on the phone to david beckham we're not going to get on the phone to Anthony Joshua, because it's not going to happen. What you're yeah. looking for is C and D list celebrities. You then start to make your way up that pyramid. And I think when you get people like, for instance, Ashley Theopane, who in the world of boxing is very, very well known, but to the average Joe on the street, maybe not so. You then start to attract people of a different ilk. That's good. That's good. So going back to the sports and the conspiracies, how do you decide what you're going to do? And is there a set schedule that you'll go from one to another and that, or is it just decided on the bounce? Yeah, um, not really on the bounce, because if you have a look at the content that we're doing, um, we've done 10 episodes now over, you have to discount the first one. We did the first episode and then nothing came out for around a month um, where we were going through, let's just say, restructure uh, issues within TTM. And that's okay. just the fact of the matter. So really from episode two to where we are now, you have an eight or nine week uh, span. You have an eight to nine week period where we've brought out potentially one a week. Um what I can tell you is that we do have a backlog of content, but what we're keen to do is not just rush it out. Um, basically, yeah, it's a case of we'll approach the people, we'll plan in the time, um, but we try to release maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. I listened to the gentleman that you said um, releases every day, and he made he made a good comment. He made a comment that, that clearly said, you know, it's sometimes frowned upon maybe in this podcast world if you release once a day. I, I'm of the opposite opinion to him. I think it's too much. I think um, you need to take your time over this podcast because for me, it's credibility as well. We're dealing with minor celebrities. So these people have a portfolio. These people have a social standing. And I think it's important that what you put out is respectful to them. I think the, well, I think the two different uh, sides of the coin really were, where you're talking, like you said, to what you said, you know, l lower end celebrities, whereas he's just talking to the every man. So you've got that yeah. difference there anyway. Yeah, so that, absolutely. That probably yeah, works but, into um, that. I think the, the, the thought process as well behind the conspiracies. So just being honest with you, the, the sports stuff is is what our real passion is. So it's very easy for us to just to, to talk to these people and, and, you know, it's easy for us to get involved in. The conspiracy stuff takes a lot longer in research. Mm. Um, okay. But also, Funnily enough, the, the conspiracy stuff, in a way, gets a lot more interest. So we had, um, when we did the Travis Walton one, we released it as a full YouTube video, about an hour long as well, footage, film, you know, a lot of editing involved. And that's actually got nearly a 1,000 views on YouTube so alone far. so right. far. Um, I think, yeah, the conspiracy stuff, but like I said, it does take a lot more planning so with the sports stuff we can interview somebody get them on a zoom call and you don't really have to do much editing we're quite um proud of what we do is is um is the intros that we do yeah. so we 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 do sort of we try and do these grand sort of um intros on our youtube videos um which we like doing as well 
And that is something that we do. But other than that, it doesn't take a lot of editing. Whereas with the conspiracy stuff, it is a bit more time consuming because you've got to pick a topic, research it from pretty much from scratch, um, and then obviously record it, edit it again, and then get it out there. And do you know what, Marv, when you're dealing with people from the other side of the Atlantic as well, um, the editing stage can then sometimes take a little bit longer because you, you're to and from and across yeah. the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and that can be sometimes pretty difficult. And then you have to agree on, uh, do you like the introduction? Yes, it's good. I mean, we're very, very lucky with our links that we have around the world. The people are genuinely, uh, we have such a good relationship with them out of mutual respect for doing the right thing. Um, that, that we, we never have any issues at all, actually. Um, it's a case of getting it recorded. Are you happy with it? Yes. Am I happy with it? Yes. Let's send out a couple of promos on Twitter and the socials to then maybe, you know, prick the ears up of the, of the, of the clients and the consumers uh, and listeners. And then from there, we then drop it um, a, a prearranged scheduled time on YouTube. So we'll upload it to YouTube and we'll schedule it. So if I was to upload one tonight, I could schedule it for eight o'clock tomorrow and it'll already be up on YouTube, sat there waiting and that means we can then promote it during the day but we also release everything as a straight podcast available on apple Podcasts, spotify anchor all the usual outlets too how do you actually research the subjects that you end up discussing so mainly the internet um so if we use 9-11 as an example i already had a pretty good base knowledge of it just from it's something i've always been interested in so I, you know, uh, I, if I could plug a particular documentary, um, Zeitgeist. Anyone who's interested in nine eleven, do yourself a favor. I think it's on Netflix. It's certainly on YouTube. Zeitgeist. Watch that. Um, covers nine eleven in great detail. It's a really, really good documentary. And that was when I watched that. It was um, a real eye opener for me. Now I watched that probably the segment on nine eleven probably three or four times with a just with a notepad in front of me, written some notes down. Um, and then, uh, you, you know, Wikipedia, um, the internet, you know, I was reading articles from the New York post from 2001, you know, April, 2001, you know, to the research, you know, obviously the Larry Silverstein stuff, um, all of that, um, YouTube's a really good tool as well. Um, so in terms of research, it is it, main, it is the internet. Um, but yeah, it's, it's wikipedia it's newspaper articles that sort of thing um and youtube basically marv yeah look i mean you've you've also got to remember we're going out in potentially a, a world arena now you're not going to go out in a world arena and just put anything out i, I think for me i so I, I i don't know how many other podcasters do it but um, i i think it's really important that you maintain some sort of credibility and i think yeah. it's important that you give respect to the subject that you're listening to now let's just take 9 11 as an example a lot of people died in that event you cannot you cannot and must not out of respect for everybody on that day start coming out with a half-hearted research I think it's disrespectful. And I think also the podcast will then, you know, begin to gain more credibility when you've put the, you know, maybe I'd say about a good week of research, um, sometimes up late at night, um, watching the, the back dark corners of the internet, looking for facts, looking for random things. I mean, I was up um, watching uh, a, a test, a metal melting test, which was undertaken in New Mexico from a bunch of debunkers into 9-11 to, to try and get the other side of the story as well. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a truth movement, a 9-11 truth movement. So we researched that in its entirety, but also on the other side of the coin as well. I think it's important that you look at the, the other side of the story. And I think um, we, we, we've done a good job on that. The Travis Walton story was really good. And um, space for me is of particular interest. I think it's absolutely essential that the human race, uh, you know, take their eyes to the skies and, and start to actually think about the arena in which we live in. Yeah. So when you do edit the episodes, how do you go about that? So a couple of ways. Um, with, this, with, with the initial ones, we did audio only. So recording-wise, uh, we record a couple of different ways. So we've got, you know, your microphones and all that, a um, couple of laptops, and we use a program called Audacity. Okay. And you record straight onto Audacity. Um, record it as an audio piece and then you can edit it from there now that i found is incredibly long and painful we actually at one point we released two podcasts we recorded two podcasts in two days 
Um, obviously, we got regular jobs. So we went down about six o'clock, recorded, came back about 10, 11 o'clock at night. I stayed up and, and edited the podcast for two nights in a row until sort of three, four o'clock in the morning. And it's very long. You go through it piece by piece, cutting out, you know, every time somebody goes, um, you take that out. Every time there's a short pause, you take that out. Going along, at this point, the sound quality wasn't always the best. So you're going along, you're amplifying bits. It's very, very long. Yeah, fading um, in, fading out, equalization, yeah. um, audacity as well. You know, this software, um, you can get better software than that. But l- like, let's be brutally honest, this started off as a hobby. So we downloaded Audacity because it's free. We went straight to YouTube. A lot of your listeners now will be listening, thinking, yeah, I've done that. I needed help. I didn't know. Where do you start? How do you make a podcast? You can go to some YouTube channels and you see a guy on there going, yeah, it's really easy. Just spend £600 and you're fine. Well, do you know yeah, what? Yeah. Do you know what? 70 to 80 percent of normal people who make podcasts don't have that budget so what we decided to do was look a little harder and it is possible so audacity is a free software program that you download to your laptop it's safe for a start which is very important um you know you don't want any bugs coming through to your pc so it's safe and secure that's the first thing secondly it's user friendly there's tutorials over the whole of youtube you can equalize things up and down. You can record onto it. You can get a, for instance, a Zoom call, import it into Audacity, strip out the strip out the audio, save it, and play with the audio as well, which is important. So, for instance, you know, you could be sat talking on a podcast and someone could cough. Okay, now to me, it's extremely off-putting. It just puts me off. Like I, I, I people can't help it, but it, it puts you off. So what we then do is we. You know, after recording, we'll strip the audio, we'll put it into this program called Audacity, and we'll zoom right into the exact second where that cough is, and we'll cut it. So that coughs in. So as the normal listener is listening to it, out of goodwill to our listeners, we try to put a seal of approval, a quality seal, over the top of it, which I think is absolutely paramount. From there, we have used a couple of things for visual editing, such as iMovie is genuinely very, very user-friendly. Now, um, that's the primary tool we use for... Um for editing video so when we're making our youtube videos so it, again like we were talking about earlier with a back and forth which is what's time consuming so there'll be a lot of back and forth between me and james you know a lot of time spent on the phone together so we'll be um uh, i've got a program on on the ipad it's called bolt it's sort of like a browser and from there you can go onto youtube and then you can then download a youtube video directly off of youtube onto your ipad and then you can put it into iMovie and cut it down. So when we're doing things, for example, we're making intros for the videos and that, I'll take a video off of YouTube with Bolt, put it into iMovie, cut it down to what we need, and then you can do two or three videos, cut them down, put them together, and then stick them in as one video in iMovie, and then there you go, you've got a little video. Again, quite time-consuming, can take quite a long time. From there, Generally, I do them without sound. I send them across to James because where we've got the different strengths, James has got a very strong music background. So James will then take this soundless video, put some music onto it and do uh, a voiceover on that. So I've done the images, James will do the sound on it. And then what you get is sort of a two, three minute piece of video with some music, background music, and then uh, James will do a voiceover on it for the introductions. And the music has to be obviously royalty free too. There is a couple of options, but we tend to go through YouTube's audio library. Um, we did invest in, a, I managed to get my wife to help me get a MacBook Pro. Um, that halved our editing time from around nine hours to, I would then say, about to three hours. And then to upload it, oh. the rendering on the old laptop that we had, I had an old HP oh, laptop. God. Yeah, um, yeah. It, was, uh, it was actually embarrassing. Um, it, we used to have to <laughs> leave it on. And I'm going to be honest, in front of the listeners, maybe someone's going through this. Um, we'd finish an edit uh, around eight o'clock at night. I would then put it into Shotcut or iMovie, which is an editor, and it would then need to render. Now, rendering can can take a long time, but this would take around 10 hours. So I'd have to leave it on, and every couple of hours I would get up in the middle of the night and I'd, I'd have to check on it to make sure it was still rendering. Is the laptop turned off? Is the backlight turned off? So I thought, do you know what? No, I've had enough of this. I, I love doing podcasts and we're getting a really good following. So let's just respect ourselves here so we have a normal life and also respect our listeners by doing it properly. So we went out and, you know, I've got a MacBook Pro. And do you know what? As soon as the video is made, to render it and put it up to YouTube, it now takes around 20 minutes. 
And that's right. the, you do get what you pay for. When you see people saying, yeah, you know, get 600 pounds to do it. Look, if you've got the money, do it. But if not, you need to do it steadily. So no doubt we'll touch on later. We have an affiliation, um, which we can get a revenue stream from, which then obviously helps us to save money for this equipment. Okay. So how do you stop yourselves from being biased sports wise when you're interviewing people or do you? Yeah. The, the love of the game. Um, it's just I don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't, to be fair, I mean, we have done some uh, podcasts. You know, because with, you support uh, certain teams, don't yeah, you? Yeah, know? exactly. So, I mean, in a way, you watch a lot. If you watch football on the telly, nobody's biased, are they? You know, when you're watching, for example, you watch Match of the Day, Alan Shearer sat there, he's not biased. There, it's all, you know, Gary Neville's a really good example of that as a, you know, Man United through and through. He's not biased when you watch him on the telly. With the podcast, I think there's a bit more license to be biased okay. and it encourages banter and can be more lighthearted for the listener. Certainly some of our, uh, we did a big kickoff series. We did a couple of, um, you know, sort of a preview of the Premier League season and, that, and it, it actually made for quite interesting listening that we were actually openly fans of clubs because it led for a bit of back and forth, bit of banter. In terms of the other sports ones, like for example, boxing, Boxing's objective, uh, subjective, where the, you know you don't really have bias either way, and to particular boxers, and, and and also you want to be very careful not to offend a boxer um, by you know you don't want to tell him you know well sorry, but I actually prefer you know Anthony Joshua or whatever because you're going to offend people and that's not good. And um, if the project, if the podcast continues to grow, you never know you might actually get to interview one of these people. So you're exactly preparing, you're preparing for the future as well. I think it's important to be impartial, and if you're professional and have respect for your listeners, yourselves, and your guests, you will be. With the global football series that we did, you mentioned that you listened to the um, the one about the Cayman Islands national team manager Marv. We've got no allegiance to, you know, it's not that we're Cuba fans and we're going to tell him that we don't like the Cayman Islands, you know. Um, so it, in that respect, it's very easy to remain biased. But also, like I said, with the big kickoff ones, we were able to be less biased because I think it encouraged banter and that sort of thing. Yeah, football's um, in, in particular, Mar, for us, we're massive football fans. And if you're an American, you're an American football fan or if you're an Australian, you're an Aussie rules football fan. These are games of opinions. These are games of debate. And that is what the listener wants to listen to. I'm a Liverpool football club fan. James is a Tottenham football club fan. We met uh, just over two years ago in the European Cup final. A big deal. Probably the biggest club cup competition in the world. You know, we had major banter over that because Liverpool won and we still do. I mean, I can do it now on your podcast. I can turn around and say, you know, the bigger team won and that, and that will infuriate <laughs> you. And, and you can see it, but it, it's right there for you, you know? So have you got any specific sports that you wouldn't look at or are you open to any sport whatsoever? I think it's important to cover the sports that we love um because that's where you're going to get the passion from you're going to see the passion come on i mean i wouldn't necessarily say there isn't there is a particular sport we wouldn't cover because i don't think that's true but at the moment we're focusing mainly on boxing and football primarily really on boxing and football because it's probably where we've got the most knowledge where we've got the most you know probably connections as well um but yeah there's no sport i wouldn't cover i would quite happily you know, I, I would would love love to do some. I'd love to do basketball. I'd love to get an NBA player on that sort of thing. I think we're pretty open to anything. And and okay. you've also got to remember, Marv, that we're two different human beings. So where James, for instance, could have an affiliation with basketball, I'm I love the tennis world. I could name you the top twenty tennis players in men's and women's tennis in the LTA, uh, for instance. I'm a frequent watcher of the Aegon Championships, the ATP Tour World Tour Finals at the Millennium Dome. Um, you know, we're we're there. The dream is this for this podcast, as we say, is a multimedia podcast. It's Think Twice yep. Media's, and eventually, why can't we go out? and report of the Olympic Games. And uh, the challenges that we're facing at the moment is not just getting out regular content and securing these high-profile clients that we are getting now. Um, the, the aim for us is, is very quite simply is acquiring press passes because I think we've got the, the, the tactical nous uh, journalistically um, even though we've had no training, I think we, we've seen the world. You know, we're in our 30s now. We, we've been around. We, we know the game. And I, and I think as far as I'm concerned, um, we do it because we love it. And there's an old saying in life, you will do well and prosper at something that you enjoy doing. I run a supermarket during the week. I can't stand it. 
I hate it. No. And, and as far as I'm concerned, my dream is to eventually leave that job and to do something within sports media. And I think that with the TTM podcast, we could potentially have a good thing going. I think you have got something very good going. What shows stand out to you that you've done so far? Good question. Good question. I've enjoyed doing all of them in their own right, if I'm honest. Um, the one that stands out to me, and I think the one that we're probably most proud of, is the um, actual conspiracy one with, that we did with Kelsey of Glamour and Goosebumps, so the Travis Walton story, because it was the first time we did a real, fully edited, I say high production, high production for us, um, YouTube video to accompany with it. And we also got to meet Kelsey as well. And she's actually become a good friend of ours as well throughout the process. Um, really enjoyed the story. It was really interesting. I didn't know a thing about it. I really enjoyed doing the research. Um, there's a film. If you ever want to watch a, an interesting film, Fire in the Sky is a film based on the story. Again, I enjoyed okay. that. I watched the film uh, Fire in the Sky from 1993. Um, yeah. So I really enjoyed doing that podcast because I thought it was really cool to do, you know, across the Atlantic with somebody from Dallas. Um and, and obviously we've met a friend out of it as well, which is really nice and hope and somebody who we can continue. We're going to, we're going to keep a working relationship with her in the future. We've got another one penciled in for next week with her. And it's also been uh, very successful on YouTube as well, nearly a thousand views on it. So uh, for me, that's the standout one for me, but like I said, I've enjoyed doing it all. Um, for myself, Marv, there's two standout shows. Um, for me, there's a story behind every show. Um, the first yeah. one for me, um, from a nostalgia point of view, was the first ever show of the podcast. Um, you know, it, I drove over an hour and a half to pick this guy up um, that I'd spoke to um, who said he'd been abducted by aliens. Now, I didn't know who was going to answer the door. I didn't know what sort of character was was going to get in the car. What I did know is it was a good story. And the I think the natural journalistic sense uh, kicked in. Um, having speaking to this guy, I said, look, I'll pick you up and I'll, I'll take you to the place where we were recording. And we sat down and we did it face to face. And, you know, for a man to turn around and tell you, one, he'd been abducted by aliens and had suffered a breakdown in his marriage etc etc um struck a personal chord with me um and of course it's the first podcast of your of your podcast and media life so it is gonna it is gonna stick with you it's natural um and the second one for me i'm in complete and utter agreement with my partner james um as far as i'm concerned the the podcast about the travis walton abduction um resonates personally with me i'm 33 years old this film came out in 1993 i always remember um my father watching it late at night and I snuck downstairs to watch it. And there was a, a scene where he was abducted by the aliens uh, led, led down on a table and they put a needle in his eye. And I, I, you know, for a young, for a young lad, it, uh, it terrified me. Um, I won't lie. And it stuck with me. And I did a bit of background research into this abduction. And um, did you know that, that Travis had actually passed six polygraph tests and all the guys had passed numerous polygraph tests, which, which then gives it credibility. Um, furthermore, um, it, it's a really, really good podcast. And you're right, it's the most successful one we've had so far. But look, let's be honest, the journey that we want to go in isn't 800 views. It's 8,000. It's 80,000. Yeah. And, and that's that's the, yeah. the levels in which we need to attain. But we're, we're under no illusions. We're realists. We're building. It's going to take time. Of course. What other shows do you both listen to, uh, James Hounsell? So I, my favorite uh, podcast, uh, I say podcast slash YouTuber. So it's a uh, guys, they're called what culture, uh, what culture wrestling. Now uh, I've been watching them on YouTube for many, many years uh, for my wrestling fix. Um, regular content from them a couple of times a day, but they do podcasts as well. So um, I, that is my favorite podcast uh, or podcasters as, as a group of guys with similar interests to myself. Uh, I always think to myself, I'd love to be sat there with them and talking about all this with them. So yeah, what culture wrestling is my favorite podcast. Okay. James Harrison. Yeah, I've got two. Um, do you know what? It's pretty much in the way of, I've actually got three. Um, the first one is the very first podcast I ever started listening to. Um, it's a Liverpool Football Club podcast uh, by the 
the local newspaper of the area, which is called the Liverpool Echo. And as a, a Liverpool fan, the, the, the colour is red. And the podcast is called the Blood Red Podcast, uh, which is available on all major outlets for, for podcasting. And it gets updated two or three times a week. So latest transfer action, team news, match reviews, player interviews. It's really, really uh, lots of debate, for instance. It's very, very good. Uh, the second one is, is you know, obviously the world famous Joe Rogan. I think, you, you, you know, you... you it is what it is you know if i got given a hundred million dollar deal by spotify i'm pretty sure i could uh you know get some pretty good people on the podcast too but that being said he's done a great job and you have to tip your hat to him um yep. you know to get people on from uh from professor brian cox to colonel shraver um with the ufo stuff and then also bob lazar um you know, he really did well with the interviews. And there's a third one I really enjoy as well. And that's the TTM podcast. I think it's an up and coming podcast uh, with, with a lot going for it. <laughs> what advice would you give to people starting out for the first time in podcasting? Yeah. Um, the very first thing I would do, do not under any instance become disheartened. Mm. A lot of people will see Joe Rogan on the internet and they will say to themselves, my goodness, I would love anything to be in that position. And naturally, you'll try to imitate it. I think the big thing that, that, that comes out of these podcasts is that you begin to find your own style. I think it's absolutely imperative that you do something in a subject field that you enjoy. I think if you have a niche, I think it's an advantage. If you, for instance, have a knitting podcast, that community would be entirely interesting. I think if you have a, I don't know, a magic podcast, that niche will be better. Now, the Joe Rogan podcast, you could argue it deals with people from all walks of life. And, you know, if you want to do that, that's up to you. But I will say it will be a lot harder. You're in a, you're in, you're a little fish in a big pond um in terms of getting people onto your shows there are many outlets um, a really good facebook group for those that are listening is called the uh, facebook podcast guest group where you as your podcast okay. for instance uh post onto it and you simply say i have a podcast up and coming let's let's pick something out of the, let's pick something out i have a fishing podcast coming up i want to talk to someone who's had a great story about fishing lo and behold two or three people maybe four or five yeah, I, I, you know, I run a local fishing group. There you go. There's your, there's your guest. Um, but don't get disheartened if you can't get big, big celebrity gets, uh, guests. You will get that break. It's inevitable. If you keep working hard, it's an old saying, grinding. If you keep grinding hard and that door just creaks open, you've got to smash it open and go and grab it. Because if you grab it and take your time with it and do well with it, inevitably you're getting what we're getting we're getting a snowball effect as you start rolling a piece of snow in weather and you start rolling it up a hill it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and when you get to the top you have a massive massive product show whatever my advice do not give up my, my advice uh, marv is shoot your shot just just yep. ask people don't be don't be scared to ask people because at the end of the day they'll either ignore it they'll read it and not reply or they'll yep. or they'll say no but you'd be surprised um you just got to keep knocking on doors and eventually somebody will just give you the time of day and that's when you pounce and that's when you look and you imp you try to impress them um hope that they might come back on your show again hope they might maybe talk to a friend or somebody else in the industry and once you've got uh, like James said earlier, once you've got some names behind you, you've got a bit of credibility and you can then, you know, you can go to people and say, for example, we can go to Ashley Thea Payne and say, look, we interviewed Spike O'Sullivan last week. And they go, oh, yeah, I know Spike O'Sullivan, you know, and then they might think, OK, these guys are, you know, they're fairly, fairly reputable. Um, it's also having respect. So um, I can tell you one thing that we do to all of our guests. Um, Every single time we do the podcast at the beginning, we say, is there anything you do not want us to touch on? Um, I think that's really important out of respect. Um, okay. and, and secondly, as well, at the at the end of the podcast, we'll say, uh, when we finished it, would you like to see a preview copy um, to give you, you know, to, to give us their blessing to release it? And what that's doing, as I mentioned earlier, it's respecting your 
clients because if you can build a good relationship let's just chuck something out there for you marv imagine you've got a young boxer um you've picked him up and his boxing record is 10 fights with no losses you've interviewed him you know he's got a broadcaster like bt sport or sky sports behind him so you know they're going to push him he's going to get some sort of a title shot in the future who's to say that he doesn't go on and win a world title and when he wins the world title a lot of media outlets around the world and podcasts will try to get him on he's more likely to come back to you if you actually gave him the time of day at the beginning of career have followed his career and then ultimately respected him through the career and that's what we're trying to do that is really good advice from both of you thank you great that's fine yeah so where can people find out more about yourselves well, for you, Marv, you can you can contact me directly because I now I consider I you a friend. Um, but anyone else, we have a YouTube channel, which is if you just type in TTM podcast into YouTube, it will bring us up. Black circle, yellow writing, and we're also available on Spotify, um, Apple Podcast, Anchor, Podbean, I think, and another way we are available on Twitter, Facebook. Instagram, independently, we're available on LinkedIn and um, Reddit as well. So we're on every major social media platform. We're on every major podcast uh, distributor and we're, we have a YouTube channel. So we're not hard to find. Okay. Yeah, we have an affiliate sponsor. Um, whether you want to put this out or not, Marv, is up to you. It's uh, in the world of CBD. Um, my life, uh, personally, I, I have dealt with with issues as, as everybody has, but um for me, I, I've had uh, difficulty sleeping. I deal with uh, sometimes anxiety, um, and I got recommended this thing called CBD, which is uh, a, a medicinal product um, available in all all good retailers and all good shops. But we have an affiliation with Supreme CBD, and if anybody wants to get any discount on that, um, you just type in our code TTM30, and you get thirty percent off. So our listeners then get a, an additional treat as well. Okay, is there anything you think that people need to know about the show that I? could do with probably um, yeah we, we're desperately looking for followers on instagram and twitter to grow it um and if if anybody has a let's say an amazing story um don't hesitate to hit us up on email because we'll always respond like yourself um you always respond um yeah we'd like people to respond to us if possible if they have a great story um there's a story we're about to do, which I could, you know what, as you've asked the question, um, it's about Tanner's voice, which is a, a lady whose son died in suspicious circumstances. She's coming onto the podcast to discuss that um, and more. So I think uh, if you have a fantastic story um, and you want the world to know about that story and you're looking for a reputable podcasting team with, that will respect you and respect your dignity um, and give a high quality broadcast, then look no further than the, the TTM team. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah no problem. Guys. And thank you to the listeners, and I hope that you will join me again for another episode of Pods Like Us. And I think the whole idea of making it conversational rather than just a basic, I ask a question, then someone answers, yeah. then I ask a question. I think it makes it more interesting for the listener. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, agree I mean, I, I'll listen to it on the way to work and uh, no doubt I'll think to myself, oh, bloody hell, I shouldn't have said that. Do you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> it, it, is, it is what it is. But um, look, Marv, I mean, as far as we're concerned, we'll, we'll, when that comes out, we'll, uh, we'll heavily promote that for you through all of our social media outlets and channels and platforms to get you some additional viewers. And I think that's really important for you that you know you have a friend in us. Thank you very much for that. It will not be out for a while because I've already got Ninth or tenth, isn't oh, it? I believe was it next month? Maybe I don't know. I can't remember. I think I saw a yes, date. On I think it's too, something yeah. like that. Yeah, because yeah, I've yeah. already got. I think I've got seven in the bag already. Really? Yeah, yeah, fair yeah. play. Just take yes. your time editing yeah. them, Marv. Just take your time editing That's them, it. my friend. It's just taking your time. Don't have no rush. I mean, over Christmas we're going to cram a load in early November, mid November, then close it down for Christmas and drop it all over the period. Do you know what I mean? And then kick off again January. Well, I had five of them edited before I put the first one out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because then 
I'm just thinking because I'm doing it on a series basis, yeah. then yeah. that means that I'm already ahead of the curve. That's the mm. whole idea of doing that, you see. We're pretty what do you much use? in that place as well, yeah. What do you use for your editing, Mav? Audacity. <laughs> <laughs> did, we ex- did we explain it all right or not? Yeah. Yes, you did. It is wonderful, Audacity, but how does it take time? Oh, I tried Reaper, but I couldn't. I actually find I don't Reaper, get that. I find Reaper more difficult to use, even though mm. you're paying for the thing. Really? Do you know what? Do you know what, Marv? I have got a question for you. Um, yep. We primarily we upload to Anchor. Okay, it's free. Okay. Um, they then distribute it to Spotify and Apple on our behalf. What we can't oh. find is sort of all these. A lot of podcasters are coming out, and I'm noticing that they're going, "Yeah, we're ranked." this and this and this and we've had 250,000 listens from Indonesia is there some sort of independent adjudicator that, that actually lists and ranks podcasts where they maybe pick up your RSS feed for instance are you aware of anything of that or it might be a question for for the general podcast community I think that's a question for the general because I've only yeah. this has only been going for a, a week so oh really I do it through Podbean I only started the first one only came out last week we oh, are okay. on Podbean. I, well, I think Twice we are. Weakness. I think um, we, we did start going through Podbean. You've got to pay for it or not? Yeah, I'll pay for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah see, we go through Anchor. It's free. Um, if you, but, you know, let's, let's be brutally honest. When we start to make more money through CBD, I'm not going to go into you know, exact mathematics, but let's just say we've got to open our own bank account. So as far as I'm concerned, as we start to get money building up, then we'll probably venture into something that we might pay a small fee for to, to help rank us and, and get us out there a bit further, really. Anyway, I'll let you yeah. guys get on and I'll uh, yeah, yeah. get a cup of coffee for the next one. Thanks, Thank Martin. Appreciate it. I hope you, hope Thank you, you mate. keep in touch. You take care. Keep in, yeah, hope you yep. keep in touch, Marv, all right? Yeah, will do, mate. I'll send you both a copy uh, before it goes out. All right, Brilliant. thanks, Appreciate mate. Appreciate that. Bye, buddy. That's all right. No problem. Take care, mate. Thanks, mate. Bye. Bye. How do I stop recording? Uh, Have you both just looked at? I've sent you a photograph of the uh, of the bullet points to hit. What do you think? Uh, Where Uh, where have you sent it? Instagram. Instagram. Yep. Right. Okay. I'll have a quick look. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to basically have just have a chat. And make sure that during the chat we hit all of those points so that it gets your show across and you know what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's quite that's quite simple to do. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. There's no issue with that at all. Um, I think that's I haven't, I haven't, straightforward. I haven't received it, Martin. What on your inst- oh it's is have you got it on T are you in TTM Pods Instagram, James? No, I don't have access to that one. There we go. Right. So basically, yeah, he hasn't got your personal one. Right. I want to go to James Hounsell then. Yeah. That's right. And yep. congratulations on pronouncing my name correctly because it doesn't often happen. Oh, it's going to be difficult for me being a northerner pronouncing H's. <laughs> well, to yeah, be yeah. fair, to be fair, um, I do, I do, I don't come from down south. Uh, we're both based in a uh, town called Froome near Bath in Somerset, but I'm actually from the West Midlands. So, um, okay, yeah, yeah, I've uh, been about. There we go, the skimp man. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> now, I, I don't even know what the hell that means, but yeah, we just call him Dev, but we don't do that professionally. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, which one is it? Uh, it's the Skip Man 13. Yeah. a picture of myself it. and my daughter on it. Yep. Got that. Let's have a look. Take a photo. Brilliant. And send. Perfect. I've got another show at half past ten. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you do it. I just Here we don't go. know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. It's uh, you're very dedicated. I mean, to be fair, this is big for us to do two podcasts in one evening. We just finished with Ashley Thea Payne, a world famous boxer. Okay. So yeah, um, pretty good. And um, I had to be called into work earlier as well today, and it's by luck that I managed to get done what I had to get done. Uh, yeah, and get home. So I really appreciate you um, moving this one forward. It's really helped me out, and I appreciate. So that. you're you're TTMP. Okay. We're TTM, and you're TTMP. Is that right? Pod- oh no, we're now oh, TTMP, TTM podcast. Okay, I'm with you. I was going to say I didn't think. Yeah, TTM pods. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're actually. Um, although we started primarily, we cover this. It's probably more interesting to cover it during the actual podcast. So we're actually really as well we've focused quite um a lot on our youtube channel as well now so we've actually um snowboarded into a youtube channel as well okay 
um, which is quite interesting as well. I think we should get in get into this straight away then. Let's yeah, go, let's do it. Right. <clears throat>